So when you'd be the new kid on the block, yeah. did everybody sort of welcome you with open arms and help you and give you advice and stuff? They did. They did. They did exactly that. Because obviously the worry is that you, you're going into a show that's been going for three series. They could have their own little clique and I could be the new guy that they could not like yes, that much. But everyone was so welcoming to me. And I mean, Tess, Tess Pete Jones came up to me and gave me a big old kiss. Aww. Like I'd known her for years. <laughs> And I mean, I had, because I grew up watching her in Only Fools and Horses. Well, exactly. And, yeah, they so all just I know, that's part really, of the really good. We know that James Norton is going at some point, but we don't want to give away when he is. Yeah. And then I guess your character takes centre stage, almost. Yeah, Kinda? yeah. In, in a way, and, yeah, yeah, in a way. And the, the way that the writers have done it is a really lovely, organic good. handover that I think the fans mm. will love. Good, yeah. good. That's great. And Robson Green... Robson has become Green. one of your best pals. One of my you best friends in the world. You two have just really clicked. Who would have ever thought that I could say <laughs> that Robson Green was a good friend of mine? I, I know. know. We, we, from the moment we met at the, the chemistry read before I got the part, we, we hit it off instantly. And, oh. you know, I genuinely miss that I'm, I'm not filming with him right now. Doesn't that make going into your work so much better? It's just like yeah. w what we were saying earlier on, you know, it just, that's... That makes it a joy. It's amazing. It's I mean, like easy. you know, I've done a, a, a few jobs, and every set I've been on has been has been great. But nothing's quite been like Grandchester, and it's oh. it's it's great that a set is quite famous for being a really lovely set to work on, and it yeah. was. Well, look, I know he's one of your bestest pals, but he's not here. He's in New Zealand, but he did send he did send you this wee message. Have a look. Good day <laughs> from Down Under, Tom. As you can see, it's hell here. Okay, so you want some advice? Well, as you know, you can't move for advice in this industry. So my advice to you, Tom, is don't listen to advice. Mate, my mum always told me the world is full of wonderful people and you have to try and meet as many of them as you can. And you, sir, are one of them. You are a prince among men. Right, I'm off for a swim. Oh, that looks amazing. They're all lovely oh, guys. Oh, I almost want to cry. He's such oh, a lovely really guy. Good. Well, you'll be working together soon enough. Oh, I When you so. do the, the next series and the next one after that, I'm hoping so. for sure. Um, also, as well as doing this, you worked with one of the loveliest guys in show business, Tom Hanks. Yep. Did a film with Tom Hanks. I did. How was I... that? Again, I, ca I, I can't believe that I can say out loud that I worked with Tom Hanks, who is my mm. acting hero, the reason I'm, I'm doing this job. He was, he was incredible. He's as absolutely... I mean, you've interviewed him. He's as absolutely nice in real life as he is on camera. And it shows... It's a testament to showing that you can be that big and that famous and be that down-to-earth. Yeah, it's lovely. What was the movie you both worked on? And how a film was called it? Greyhound. Oh, yeah, which he that. Which he wrote, yeah, yeah. based on a, the, a book by C.S. Forrester called The Good Shepherd. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, he wrote, produced it and, and is starring in it. First film that he's no second film after Larry Kramer he wrote and yeah and he chose me to to be in it he's the captain of this World War Two destroyer and I play as sort of second in command. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, I mean that really is that's really good. Are you still performing? Because I know you love music and you do that. Yeah. Will we see that in the show? Will he be getting out his guitar at any point? Robson spends uh, you know. He's a, he's a singer. I don't know if anyone's heard that he used to be a massive singer. Huge. He spends all the time on set singing. <laughs> so I think maybe next series I'm going to start a, a Robson and Tom band. It's not quite as catchy as Jerome, but no, but I think it could work. work very very well. I think so. I think so. I think you have to get your guitar. <laughs> and you have to do that. As well as that, though, your mum is a really successful author, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah. yeah she is. And that's one project I know that you'd quite like to go off the ground. Just maybe turning one of her film, you know, one of her books, into a movie or a series. Yeah. I, you know, as an actor, you're always sort of the beck and call of other people. And their stories and yeah. you kind of hope one day you can make your own and Ooh. and so luckily my mum is a wonderful author and she has this book she has loads of books that I'd love to adapt but her latest one Murder in Belgravia Mayfair 100 is mm -hmm. set in World War One and it's it's about a detective team that involves women in a time where they weren't involved so it's sort of a more very timely exactly very yeah timely. and it's very dark and and, and gritty but also lovely and funny and I think it would work great on TV Makes and sense. I'd love to make it. It would make sense. Well, look, we were just talking to Tim Roth there, weren't we? And he says he's going to be making a movie about his dad's life. Is so he? So if it's good enough for him... Yeah, if it's good enough for <laughs> Tim Roth. I think it's good yeah. enough for you too.